what's good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so we gotta talk about what happened on the wrestlemania 40 behind the curtain documentary that wwe just dropped on their youtube page and i had a funny feeling i had a funny feeling and somebody had mentioned it um when we was live streaming earlier this week that there was a good chance that me and the homie dub was going to be featured in the documentary because wwe has you know shown some of our reactions over the past a uh, few months from earlier this year and even late last year with the whole cm punk returning you know to wwe and then the rock reposting our wrestlemania reactions on his instagram i just had a feeling that there was a good chance we were going to be featured in this documentary and some of you guys as well and guess what we was man this was so damn cool let me show y'all this if you haven't seen it already let me go ahead and make myself smaller so y'all can see this man i y'all had tagged me and dub on twitter let me make this bigger so you can see it uh y'all had clipped it and shout out to all the other um wrestling content creators that was uh you know featured in this documentary as well let me make this bigger so y'all can see it this is dope, man. Oh my God, it's happening! The Rock is back. Shout out to Weezy. Shout out to Sandy. And there we go. There we go. Oh snap! We're getting it. Oh my God, it's happening. That was so cool. The Rock is back. This was so cool, bro. This was so cool. This is dope, man. It, it was just cool to see that, you know us reacting to the rock coming back and just this whole roller coaster ride for wrestlemania 40 was just memorable for us man and we'll always remember this uh i definitely enjoyed the documentary them doing behind the scenes and talking about how things were you know supposed to be set up um when the rock had came back <laughs> initially they were going to try to do the rock versus roman at wrestlemania 39 which a lot of us already knew he stated that on the pat mcafee show it didn't happen so they were going to shoot for WrestleMania 40 this year. And Cody apparently had knew that may be the route. That's probably going to be the route they go. They weren't 100% locked in, but that was the route most likely they were going to go. Cody had knew um, at the Royal Rumble. Like he had knew, I think well, it was a little bit, I think Triple H was like a little bit before the Royal Rumble, but he had knew that was going to be the situation. <laughs> And then he knew he was going to win the Royal Rumble. But they were really just trying to test the waters to see how the fans would, re would react to Cody going from Roman. So at that point, he already knew that there was a good chance that his his main event was going to be taken away um, for the Rock and Roman. And he was just trying to hope the fans would still care. And obviously, we know what happened. He essentially gave up his spot for the Rock and Roman to happen. The crowd there on that SmackDown show was electric about it. You know, they were just excited about it. But at the same time, social media and everything involved with that, so people, fans online weren't having it. And then the movement, be, you know, started to arise of We Want Cody. Now, The Rock says initially that he decided to go ahead and pivot and they do an audible now of course there's some people that don't believe that some people feel like that may not have been originally his idea may have been somebody else's idea but the rock said it was his idea to pivot and go in a different direction they could have played to state the course but he's like he he didn't like the reactions he was getting so it he was like you know what we need to play into it and that's when he came up with the final boss and we got that whole situation, which I do think this was the greatest pivot that WWE's done in a very long time because it worked. They they played, they saw what was happening. They went with one way. Fans online and all, you know, at that point, everywhere else in all the arenas, it was we want Cody. They was like, all right, we, we have to kind of play up to what, what the fans want here. And they audibled out. Whether The Rock was initially behind that decision, like he says he was, or somebody else, you got to give them credit. They pulled an audible, and it worked. And then we got the best, one of the best versions of The Rock, 
the final boss. The Rock essentially really made this rematch that much more entertaining. Because how can you build up another rematch with someone? How can you build up the stakes? And they did with the whole bloodline situation. Then Seth being the MVP of WrestleMania, working his ass off while injured. And he played an integral, integral part. Because if you think about it, Drew getting injured, I mean, CM Punk getting injured because of Drew, obviously not on purpose, changed everything. Because Triple H said it was supposed to be CM Punk versus Seth. But it changed everything. The story and the dynamic changed because of that butterfly effect of CM Punk getting hurt. And if you want to be honest, that made for a better overall story because now Seth was fighting besides the guy that he had been trying to destroy a few years ago in Cody. It was literally Team WWE in a sense versus the bloodline. And he wasn't trying to stand by to watch the bloodline take over WWE. And I like that story even much better, potentially, than what we ended up getting maybe with CM Punk and Seth. I think that was going to be a really good story, too. But I think this worked overall because Seth has history with Roman. And it played into the match. It played into both matches, but specifically night two. It played into the match of Roman not letting that hatred go for Seth for all those years. He had the chair. He had the opportunity to finish Cody, but he had to hit Seth Rollins in the back because he couldn't let it go. Seth was the MVP. The story there was so good. Seth put his, his, his championship on the line with Drew. He put his body on the line for the sake of Cody finishing the story. This was so good. And to see the inner workings, to see everything, how everything played out, to see how the final boss really came into fruition, all these things, this was great. And you can tell Triple H and The Rock, they were working really well together in creating one of the greatest main events of all time, one of the greatest WrestleManias, and definitely one of the greatest night ones, night two main event, uh, main events of all time like watching those clips and highlights it made me want to go back and watch the match i'm probably going to after i finish recording this video this is how you do it this is how you create a great story you in a sense they already had a direction they were going to go but because they had to pivot they made an even better story and all these converging pieces align to at the end of the day, Cody being the one to finish the story. And this was so cool. And for WWE to have some of the wrestling content creators be a part of this documentary, this will always be a thing. We can always go back and look at this documentary and see that me and the homie Dub was a part of this. And this was dope. And I, I'm just very thankful for y'all, the subscribers, for even making this happen, bro. This was so, this was definitely so dope, bro. This was, it was, it was cool to see this. I enjoyed the documentary and I like how they left it off. If you paid attention, the, the audio clip of The Rock saying, your story with Roman is done. Our story is just beginning, which is giving me shades of we're just getting started. And I do think WrestleMania 41 is going to be something that could potentially rival or even be better than WrestleMania 40 because of the story that they're trying to potentially tell. And I think the ultimate story here and the story that we've been wanting, they even wanted to do at this year's WrestleMania is Roman versus The Rock. This is why I say WrestleMania 40 may be even better potentially has the 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 roadmap the the potential to really be even better than WrestleMania 40. That's crazy. The match they've been wanting to do for so long, they now I think they have a clear path to do it. And I think we're seeing the beginnings of it with this whole new bloodline situation. This is good. 
this is good. I'm 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 definitely excited to see where the rest of the year is gonna go for WWE leading into next year's WrestleMania. It's gonna be fun. And hopefully, you know, if you know things align up, maybe we can be a part of WrestleMania's 40, 41's uh, you know, movement. Maybe maybe WWE features us or you know, you never know. Maybe we get invited to WrestleMania. Who knows? We'll see. But, you know, if not, we're still going to enjoy it. We're still going to watch it. We're still going to have a good time. And you never know how things will play out. So, yeah, this was really dope. Really wanted to make a quick video for y'all, man. Just saying, if you hadn't seen the documentaries on WWE's YouTube channel and your boy Dub and Ross, you know what I'm saying, in the Clutch Clutch Squad, we on that documentary will forever be tied to WrestleMania 40, man. So, hey, comment down below. Let me know, did y'all get a chance to watch the WrestleMania 40 behind the curtains documentary? Did you enjoy it? And just let me know how you felt about WrestleMania 40 these months later. It, is it is it something that you still would go back and watch some of the matches from? Is it, is it one of your favorite WrestleManias of recent year? How do y'all feel about it now that it's been many months later? How do y'all feel about the show still as a whole? But I appreciate all the love and support. Bro 250k and I'm seeing you on speed of YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.